It's finally time. The 2024 World Series are here. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. I have Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Download the app today and use code Locked On MLB to win fifty dollars instantly when you play your first five dollar lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Ah, all right. Well, as usual, I'm Braden Wasco. He's Carter First. You can put us on Twitter, Braden Five Wasco. Carter First too, as well on Instagram and TikTok at Locked On Blue Jays. If you're new here to YouTube, make sure you drop that subscription. Or if you've been watching for a long time and you just keep coming back. You might as well subscribe. Help us out. It's free. You might as well do so. Um, lots to get into, Carter. Oh, I forgot to mention we have a Discord down below if you guys want to join that. Talk Blue Jays with us any time of day. Go down. Link in the description. Join that. Click that link. It should be easy enough for you. Um, lots to talk about. Little World Series preview since it is uh, the day is here. The day is here. The two teams that I didn't want to see playing for the World Series are playing for the World Series. So here we go. Uh, but besides that, we got, we're going to talk about Kevin Kiermeyer, sort of what he meant to the Toronto Blue Jays with him uh, departing this season. And this is his last season. So we'll talk about him as well as some of the other, um, you know, ex Blue Jays that are now playing on these two teams competing for the World Series. Also, third segment, we'll get into Danny Jantz and his season in review as he has also left the Toronto Blue Jays. And probably by next week's time, we'll start to get into some of the this, you know, the, the Blue Jays that are still playing on this team and that we can look forward to seeing in 2025. Carter, let's start off. Just how excited are you? The World Series baseball is here on a scale of 1 to 10. How ready are you for this World Series? Oh, God. It's a, it's a tough question. Uh, it's Again, you, you kind of said it at the, the start of this episode. Just th- this is kind of our hell, unfortunately. It, it's going to be fun to watch the matchup, but you got Dodgers, Yankees. That's a lot of baseball fans' hell. That's that's not what we want to see, unfortunately. But I guess I guess like a seven. I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for the games. But there's one way this could go where I am going to have – like this long offseason is going to be a long offseason. Don't get me wrong. But if the Yankees win the World Series – it's going to be a whole lot longer of an off season. So obviously without uh, saying much else, I think it goes without saying that we're going to be big Dodgers fans for, for this world series. Obviously don't want to see the Yankees uh, getting a, a title here, but uh, overall, like it's, it's the world series. So you can't really hate on it. It's going to be a lot of good baseball. Some of the biggest uh, moments in all sports. So it's going to see, be interesting to see who puts up and who kind of shuts up here. But at the end of the day, Juan, Juan Soto's gone. We're, we're not getting Juan Soto. There's no way. No, no. He's he's not a he's not gonna be a Toronto Blue Jay. There's no no shot. I, you know what? And and that's what we said in the episode that we did on it. You know, there there are a lot of uh media outlets that are they're posting that they think it's a realistic option. I mean, you said our piece. We said it's not gonna happen even before the, the Yankees were World Series contenders. And and now that this is here and and they have a chance to win it all, there's no way. Like the, it was at it was at one percent before this. Now it's at a solid zero, maybe negative percentage that Juan Soto is going to end up being a Toronto. I, I said that with every win, uh, Juan Soto going to the Toronto Blue Jays goes down two percent. Now he's in the World Series, and what really did it for me was uh, I was actually on TikTok, just aimlessly scrolling, scrolling, not really doing you know doing anything. But I see Jazz Chisholm talk about Juan Soto after obviously the uh, the accolades in extra innings, and Jazz Chisholm says, "Pay Juan Soto, pay the man." Seven hundred million dollars. You're getting that from Chaz Chisholm. You're getting that in when you're still in a playoff run from your own teammates. It, it's just putting the nail in the coffin for me. I, unfortunately, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of Juan Soto in the pinstripes uh, when we're watching Toronto Blue Jays baseball in the future. And I, I really pains me saying that because he's such a good player. But uh, it it's the Yankees. It's always been the Yankees. Like I said, with this World Series after the first round, it's it's always been the Yankees Dodgers. It's always been the Yankees Dodgers. Believe it at that. Yeah. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. I'm going to have to pull out the, uh, I got a Dodgers Freddie Freeman jersey in the closet somewhere. So I got to pull that out. I'm going to be repping the Dodgers for the next week and a bit here. Um, But in saying that, Carter, I I think before we get into some of the ex-Blue Jays that are currently playing with the uh, Dodgers or Yankees, uh, let's just give our predictions. We might as well. We, uh, I know we usually do this stuff in the third segment, but today's a big day. It, It is the start of the World Series. So, Carter, give me your prediction. Who wins and in how many games? I don't know. Maybe we'll throw a 
I don't know, some type of bet on it. Hopefully no money. Cause I'm, you know what, if it's not in my betting account right now, I am trying to stay away from the, the betting, the gambling in real life. So something else maybe. Yeah. And I'll uh, go with my picks during uh, our prize picks break here in the first segment. And I'll kind of go with what I think is going to happen in the first game. I got the Dodgers, man. I got the Dodgers. Shohei has always been the Dodgers. It's always been the Dodgers for the World Series. They get one early after paying Shohei that massive contract. They get one. Uh, basically, it does is one enough for the twenty plus years that you're going to have to pay Shohei Otani and others um, like millions of dollars. So I don't, I don't know if it is, but I think they're going to get their one here. I got them winning it in six games, and it really comes down uh, to the bullpen and the depth. When you look at just across, obviously the lineup, you compare the Yankees, you compare the Dodgers. I think I'm going to run with the uh, the Shohei Otani, the Freddie Freeman, the Teoscar Hernandez, the Mookie Betts, the Max Muncy's, the Gavin Luxes, the Tommy Edmonds. Like, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. Lots. Gavin Lux is still injured. He's hopefully going to come back for this series. But you look at the other side, Stanton's going off. I, don't get me wrong. He's having a great year. That's one of the ones I was wrong on. Again, I didn't think Stanton was going to have that good of a year based off what I've seen. Really bounced back there. Juan Soto, Aaron Judge, Jazz Chisholm's there. Look at the bullpens. You look at the starting pitching. Everything for me is pointing towards the Dodgers. So I got the Dodgers in six. Well, it's it's like me and you actually talk before episodes because I also have the Dodgers in six. Um, and it just comes down to depth. Depth is the biggest piece. I, it, not even just in the pitching staff or the rotation, anything like that. Just their basic nine fielders to me are better. You have guys like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Freddie Freeman is is battling injury right now. Like I've never seen somebody look more injured and still competing and playing very he, well. He should not be be playing baseball right now, but he is because it's the World Series and he's yeah. Canadian. Just a little bit of that uh, Canadian grip that has it uh, inside of him. That's right. And and you know what I have to Freddie Freeman. I said is like probably my second favorite baseball player of all time. Um, so I have to I have to cheer for him as well. I mean, obviously he won't touch Josh Donaldson. I don't think anybody will ever. But uh, but Freddie Freeman is number two. I uh, I've always liked him. Canadian Canadian guy. So it's uh, it's nice to see. Um, so I, I got to go that. that. That's where all my chips are right now. I uh, I've put a bet down on FanDuel, which I'm sure you guys will hear about at some point in uh, one of those ads that I do. Um, yeah, Carter, I just think they're a better team. They're built better. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I think the Yankees are a great team. And, and it pains me to say that they are a great team. The Dodgers are next level. The amount of superstars that the Dodgers have on their team and not considering even the depth, just the superstars. I mean, if you put the, just the superstars from both teams head to head, it would be a tr- close matchup. Maybe the Yankees have it, but then you go down the lineup Carter and there are so, so many good pieces to this Dodgers team. Well, and just another uh, positive for the Dodgers. When you look at X Toronto Blue Jays, they got two and the Yankees only got one. So they, they got a win there uh, as well. Obviously, with the, the Dodgers, you got Kevin Giermeyer being traded at this year's trade deadline. And then Teoscar Hernandez, which we've been talking about a lot recently. There's been a lot of talks about him possibly returning to the Toronto Blue Jays, whether that was a mistake, not resigning him. We've talked about him a lot on this podcast as well. Obviously, Teo is uh, is a fan favorite amongst us, as um, amongst all, all of uh, Toronto Blue Jays fans as well. Then you look at the other side, as I've talked about uh, on previous episodes, Tim Meza. Tim Meza's never, again, nothing against Tim Meza. He hasn't really done anything uh, at all to make me not like him, but I've just never been a Tim Meza fan. Not exactly sure what it is. Nothing against him personally. I've heard a lot of good things, obviously. But just, yeah, Tim Mays is the ball player. I've uh, never really gotten behind. But he is an extra Toronto Blue Jays, so i got to give him my flowers there. But he's on the Yankees. So that's that's really what it comes down to. It's just any team could have been playing the Yankees right now, and I would have went on the other side. But it is nice that it is the Dodgers. At least you have two familiar faces that could possibly win uh, a pennant this year. Yeah, Carter. I mean, I, I got to go over what uh, some, you know, I, we talk about Taylor, we've talked about him a ton, but how has he done in this postseason? I, I think it's it's interesting to look at. So in the NLDS, Teoscar Hernandez batting a 333, uh, 20, 20 plate appearances, 18 at bats. He's got two home runs and seven RBIs with an on base percentage of 400, a slugging of 667, and an OPS of 1.067. Uh, 12 total bases and then in the lc and nlcs uh six games 30 plate appearances 22 at bats and he's really really struggling uh he was batting a uh, 091 with a 300 on base percentage and a slugging of 091 as well uh ops of 391 so 
Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I tell you, Oscar looks good. He's a guy that in a big moment will hit one of those big home runs. I, I, I just can taste it. It's in the air. It might be, I just have a weird feeling that it's going to be the Dodgers Jose Batista moment with Teoscar Hernandez. And it's going to hurt every Blue Jays fans out there to see what he can do for them and what he could have done for us. Yeah, that if that happens, it's going to definitely be bittersweet at that moment. But Teo is one of the easiest guys for me. That's like an ex Blue Jay. That is just, it's easy to get behind him. Yeah. He's, he's such, such an easy guy to love, such an easy guy to root for. And uh, yeah, you, you've seen obviously with the, the Toronto Blue Jays, obviously going back to that Mariners series. I think he had two home runs in that series. And then just even going back uh, to the NL uh, DS, when you look at some of the home runs he hit in that series, he's just, he just taking the NLCS off because he knew they were going to they're going to need him against the Yankees. And he has uh, something in store for uh, the fans here against the uh, New York Yankees. And maybe uh, Tim Meza as, uh, as a guy that uh, he might be facing at some point in this series as well. So obviously, Teo is the one that is really making the difference out of these three players. You got Tim Meza. I'll go over his stats quick. And then Kevin Kiermeyers as well is going to be pretty quick. It's not really a lot to go over. Kevin Kiermeyer has two plate appearances and he doesn't have a hit. It's kind of where he is, where he's at. You know what Kevin Kiermeyer is at this point. He's an offensive replacement for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And that's exactly why they traded for him. They wanted uh, in a series like this, the World Series, if they're ever up in a game and they need that gold, gold glove in the outfield, not really much better of an option than uh, Kevin Kiermeyer for that position. And then just looking at Tim Mesa, we did a Tim Mesa update. I can't remember exactly when it was, but the stats are the exact same. And <laughs> based off that, because uh, again, Tim May's a la- only lefty in the Yankees bullpen. Again, he's not going to be thrown in high leverage. He's thrown an inning in the third, has one strikeout, doesn't have a run given up as a whip of three. So it's, it's not really a piece that the Yankees are relying on down the stretch. It's probably a good thing for the New York Yankees. But yeah, three ex Blue Jays in the World Series. One of them going to be playing every single day. The other two just kind of, I guess you could say, along for the ride in uh, some aspect of it. Yeah, and, and we'll get into more of what Kevin Kiermeyer has done over his career and his, his tenure with the Toronto Blue Jays. We'll get into all that in segment two. And then, of course, like we talked about, we'll get into Danny Jensen and his season in review as well. Uh, but, Carter, just, I guess, to wrap up this, you know, World Series preview here, um, this is just a good time for baseball fans. Like, I know I hate the Yankees. I don't want to, I don't really even want to see the Dodgers win. I would much rather see the Dodgers win, but I would don't, I don't, I'm not cheering for either of these teams, really. Um, I'm cheering for some of the guys for sure, but uh, it, it's just fun. World Series baseball is something else. It, it, it There is an electricity in the atmosphere when you have that game on and, and the crowd's going electric and, and the commentators are losing their minds. The broadcast is fantastic all of the time. Uh, so, you know, shout out to the, the MLB and just the production that they put on and, and, and the hype around this. It's It really is fantastic. And it, I don't know if there's much else that beats – a world series in terms of sports. I mean, yes, you could say the super bowl, but, um, or the, you know, maybe the Stanley cup if you're Canadian, uh, but it's, you know, it is very close. I, I just think that the world series is something totally different from anything else. Oh, it's, it's unmatched truly. Like, yeah, you can bring up the super bowl. You can't even compare the two super bowls. Just it's completely unique in its own things. It's the only, uh, sport of the major sports. That's just one game. That's all you got. One game decides it all. A lot of things can happen in that one game. And that's in the NFL. You get a lot of winners that maybe you don't necessarily expect to be winners. Whereas a lot in a lot of the other leagues, seven game stretch, it usually provides you with the best team out of both leagues. And I think that's unfortunately what we got this year with the Dodgers being the best of the NL, the Yankees being the best out of the AL as much as that pains me to say it, but it was sort of in the cards. Uh, last thing about this world series before we kind of head into obviously the unanimous, most obvious world series MVP of all time that we'll talk about in the second segment, but overall, other than Kevin Kiermeyer, who is your world series MVP? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be Shohei Otani. He is going to step Pop up. Out. Yeah, well, it is. But, I mean, it's two options. I, I think, realistically, it's two options. It's it's Aaron Judge or Shohei Otani. That is the matchup. Who, Which team, which guy will lead their team to a World Series? Shohei Otani is the best player in baseball, possibly ever. And for him to win a World Series and not win MVP would be criminal. He would have to implode to not win that MVP. It, I think it's written in the stars. And, yes, I could go with a random answer. I very well could, but like, let's be honest here. It's Shohei Otani. If the Dodgers win, it's Shohei Otani, and it won't even be, the, the votes won't even be close. 
No, I'm going to argue that right away with my World Series MVP. I think there's four that you can really pick here. I think it's Aaron Judge, Juan Soto if you're going Yankees, and it's Shohei Otani or it's the guy that I'm going with. It's Mookie Betts. I, I think Mookie Betts is going to be the World Series MVP. It's because you get a little bit of that overshadowing from Shohei Otani. Mookie Betts is still one of the best players in all of baseball. And I know you're not saying that he's not. It's just that you got Shohei Otani, who probably is the best player in all of baseball. So it is tough to decide. Again, Freddie Freeman, I, he would be in the running for me. It's just he's injured. It's tough to uh, with that ankle. They're, they're probably not going to push him too hard. It's mostly just going to be, hey, get the first base and kind of just take it easy from there, I'm assuming. Maybe you get a dark horse in Teo. I, again, I don't really see that as much, unfortunately. Max Muncy is another one. I just think Mookie Betts, kind of what he did uh, in the back half of that stretch in the Mets series. I think he's going to build off of that. And I think they're going to be so overly focused on the Shohei Otani approach that Mookie Betts might kind of fall through the cracks a little bit. And I expect him to have a very good series against a New York Yankees pitching staff that I still am not fully in on, especially when you look at the bullpen. But uh, saying that, we've talked about the Yankees quite a bit, talked about the Dodgers quite a bit. Going back to our World Series MVP, obviously Kevin Kiermaier going to make a massive difference in this World Series. But we're going to talk about his time with the Toronto Blue Jays, what he did with the Dodgers, and then just overall his tenure with the Toronto Blue Jays coming up after this short break. Today's episode is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you can pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. So, what I am deciding to go with for my first game of the World Series, I just said that there's four MVPs that I think can win it. The only one I'm not going to make picks on is Juan Soto. But I'm going to go with uh, the Braden line that he kind of made uh, last week where he had Shohei Otani and Aaron Judge hitting home runs that he didn't end up putting a slip on. I'm going to go with that. And I also have Mookie Betts more than one and a half total bases. So if you know which players are going to perform on specific nights, this is a no-brainer. Download Price Picks and start making your picks today. You can download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. That's code Locked On MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. Price Picks. Run your game. So, Carter, talking about our World Series MVP, as you so gracefully put it, um, Kevin Kiermeyer, and, and this is a tough one because I think you want to focus in on his time with the Toronto Blue Jays and what he's done. But as we all know, this is his final season before retirement. He's he said that he's come out and talked about it. Um, so I want to sort of give a little bit of statistics, sort of just his career as a whole. And, and I mean, looking at it, Carter, I mean, it, it was a great career for Kevin Kiermaier. And I think we will, we all have fond memories of him if it's making those diving plays in the outfield or or being sort of, the, you know, the uh, j- just the the Superman. He, he was he was like the the Kevin Pillar of, of for some other people. Right. Um, and and instead probably- of getting, sorry to interrupt, but instead of getting that the Batmobile out, he's, you know, he's getting the bike out, just, you know, pedaling around the, uh, the city of Toronto, showing his face around It just. A very easy guy. Again, we talked about Teo being a fan favorite. Kevin Kiermaier was one of those guys that was a fan favorite as well. Again, when you look at his tenure this season, maybe it leaves a little bit worse of a taste in your mouth than uh, what we expected. But with Kevin Kiermaier, the contract, like if I'm in that situation and I have the ability to sign the max amount of contract, the max amount of money I'm going to get, you might as well run it back. You can't take anything away from Kevin Kiermaier. If if anyone was offered that amount of money, you're definitely going to take it. It's not on Kevin Kiermaier for just accepting the most amount of money he can get. But I'll throw it back uh, over to you to kind of go over Kevin Kiermaier's uh, career accolades. Yeah, his, his so his career stats, obviously, um, we'll, we'll get into them more so. But his war uh, over his entire career is 36.5. He has had uh, 3,682 at-bats with 905 hits, 95 home runs, five shy of the 100 mark. And a career batting average of 246. Uh, I'll look here just to get some more stats for you. 378 RBIs, 132 stolen bases. Uh, he has an on-base percentage through his career of uh, 304, a slugging of 402, and an OPS of 706. Um, Carter, I mean, this guy, he's hes just done it all, man. And I, he's got four gold glove, one platinum glove. I mean, he is the defender that every team wants, right? He is the guy that you want manning center field. And uh, I, I just have so many fond memories of Kevin Kiermaier. And that's kind of the way I'm going to keep this podcast regarding Kevin Kiermaier is because just more so looking over the career that he has had, much less that the season he had in 2024 with the Toronto Blue Jays. 
because going into the season, me and you, we talked about it a lot on the podcast, a lot off camera. I talked about it with, with some of our buddies. It was the most obvious call that you probably were going to see some Kevin Kiermeyer regression this season. I know when we did our disappointments, I had Kevin Kiermeyer again, not saying that I'm an Einstein. It just it kind of was in the cards. In 2023, Kiermeyer hit 265 with a 322 OBP, a slugging of 419, which is almost the highest of his career. Going back to 2017 was the last time he had a slugging even remotely close to that. For an OPS of 741, was an above average hitter. If you're expecting that from Kevin Kiermeyer in another season, it just it just wasn't in the cards. It's just above his career averages for a guy that was getting near the end of his career, obviously. So running that back, getting that $11.5 million contract from Ross Atkins, just an overpay, simply an overpay, unfortunately, for uh, the club. But with Kevin Kiermeyer, like bringing him back, you should have knew. He was just going to kind of rotate as your fourth outfielder, was going to slot in when Dalton Barshow needed a rest, wasn't supposed to be the focal point of the offense. So with that bat, didn't obviously end up doing nearly as well as last season. But you can't really blame Kevin Kiermeyer when he's, you know, at the end of his career <laughs> for the offensive struggles that the Toronto Blue Jays had in 2024. Yeah, and, and I'm not, I'm really not, I, I don't want to dog him at all, really, like you said. I th- I want to focus this on more of like a positive. He, he's ending his career. Um, but yeah, obviously, it was an overpay. That, that, that I mean, that's not a shock to absolutely anybody. We talked about it. Um, but it was what it was. Um, and, and it's good to see him going for a run here for, for a World Series, try to pick up that ring. I really hope he does get it. Um, but, you, you know, uh, you know, they have a funny, it has a funny way of working out sometimes where uh, this, this could be a Yankees uh, World Series, which would kill me. But I, I wanted to go back over his stats, just in Toronto as a whole here. He played in 211 games, 625 plate appearances with uh, 12 home runs over his Blue Jays tenure, 54 RBI, 19 stolen bases. He had a total batting average with Toronto of 240 an on-base percentage of 292, a slugging of 381, and an OPS of 673. Uh, and yeah, Carter, just I guess just to wrap this up for myself here, um, yeah, it's going to be sad to see that Kevin Kiermaier is not in the league anymore. I think he's a guy that, you know, when you think of baseball, he's, sort of, he's weirdly one of the guys you think of. He's just been around for so long, making those highlight reel catches that, you know, it's, it's going to be tough to not have him in the league. Uh, I just before we do, uh, it's like end off of Kevin Kiermaier because I think this will be one of the uh, the last times we do talk about him. Unfortunately, uh, just it's kind of the uh, the world of emotions that you got from the Kevin Kiermaier experience as a Toronto Blue Jays fan. Obviously, being uh, a Rays legend, uh, coming to the the Rogers Center all the time, where we have, whether we have to go to Tropicana, just you know stealing runs uh, consistently, pretty much every single time that we played Kevin Kiermaier. And then uh, the one that always stands out in my head, the Kevin Kiermaier stealing the lineup card on a slide at home uh, that play didn't really leave him in a, a bright light with Toronto Blue Jays fans. And then obviously you get the news in 2023, Kevin Kiermaier going to sign with the Toronto Blue Jays. A lot of people kind of, you know, on the fence about it, you know, like, Hey, this guy used to be our rival. Like obviously the, the lineup card thing, but Hey, that's the type of guy that we said it when he signed, that's the type of guy that we want on our baseball team. And look what he does in his first appearance at the Rogers center. It's the second inning and he robs a home run immediately winning over the fans. And obviously I talked about the bike route, uh, ripping around uh, Toronto, just some of the interviews, the uh, immense love he's uh, shown for the city, by his family, whether it's him, his family, again, just nothing but positive to say about Kevin Kiermaier. But looking back at just this whole experience, I didn't think we'd be at the point where I liked Kevin Kiermaier this much after his long tenure with the Tampa Bay Rays. I know, I know. It's it's sort of funny, but I think it, it goes back to the love that he showed for Toronto and Canada and, and, the, and the team when he was here. Very likable guy. Th- that all plays a part into this. You know, there's there's not there's not a ton of b- baseball players that come to Toronto and really embrace the city and embrace the, the Canadian people. So uh, shout out Kevin Kiermaier again. Um, again, we want to get into some Danny Jansen stuff here, but we wanted to spend some time on, on the man that won't be in the league anymore. So uh, hopefully he goes and, and wins a world series title and, and we can just see, you know, we can end off his career like that, but we'll have to wait and see more to come on that throughout next week, but we will get into Danny Jansen and his season in review and his tenure with the Toronto Blue Jays as well. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I always talk about FanDuel. It's one of my favorite apps on my phone. I've got some picks in. I'm going to throw some on the Dodgers winning the World Series in six games. Uh, And and if there's in-game betting, like I said, I'm a big in-game better. So throughout all of these games, I will be placing some bets. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats 
view live play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. They'll get you started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. I'm telling you, the bonus bets are so big. It helps out so much. You can earn so much more money from them. So make sure you go, you place your $5 bet and you get those bonus bets. I've gotten Carter started. I'm getting some of my other buddies going too because the bonus bets really are unbeatable. That's FanDuel.com at FanDuel. America's number one sports book. Bill Carter, we talked about Kevin Kiermeyer, sort of what was going to happen in the World Series, our, our thoughts, opinions, talking about some of the ex-Blue Jays. Let's talk about another ex-Blue Jay in Danny Jansen. His season in review was traded from the Blue Jays to the Red Sox uh, around the trade deadline, Carter. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll just throw it to you. What, what are your thoughts? That Danny Jansen is gone. Alejandro Kirk is your catcher. How are you feeling about all this? Uh, overall, just about Danny Jansen leaving, it was one of those times again where you just had to you had to sell your assets. Uh, they, there were some talks about the Blue Jays possibly extending Danny Jansen in the offseason. That was something that we were open to. Obviously, with it being a pretty weak uh, catcher class, you're not going to be able to add uh, a big piece at the catcher position. Again, it's probably just going to be a veteran add. With uh, Alejandro Kirk, uh, it was weird for me when you talk about these two players. Because at the start of the season, I was definitely a Danny Jansen supporter. I wanted Danny Jansen playing over Holly Hunter Kirk at any single time we could. And it was definitely looking like that just based off the stats, based off of obviously the eye test. They had Danny Jansen as our number one catcher. And then the season went the way the season went, as we talked about pretty much obviously covering it for two months. It was not well. So you got to move on from your assets. You've traded Danny Jansen to the Boston Red Sox. was a little bit annoying just because it was in division as well. But uh, overall, like, you get an okay haul back. Again, we'll go into some of those prospects after. But the overall Danny Jansen experience, you lo- well, after losing Tim Meza, it was a little bit tough just because he was your longest tenured Toronto Blue Jay. And then to have him go as well, definitely a little bit unfortunate. But overall, looking back at it now, I have an argument that I think I'm just going to present right now. We talked about the Danny Jansen, and we talked about just, you know, his games played. And we always talked about how injury-prone this guy was. I feel like the Toronto Blue Jays sort of dodged a bullet a little bit just to do with these injuries. And going over this, over the last four years, he's had 10 notable injuries, 10 injuries that have shown up on the injury report, missed a ton of games as we can go over his games played. I feel like with how often Danny Jansen is injured, again, some of this is luck. Some of this is just him not protecting himself. As we remember, uh, a foul ball going off of his hand that's just for some reason available and not behind his back. A little bit unlucky there, but again, you got to protect yourself. I think that overall, the Toronto Blue Jays kind of dodged the bullet with this Danny Jansen signing, not because of his play, just because of his availability. I don't hate that at all, Carter. I, I think that that's a very strong take. Bold, maybe, to some people, because I know there was, and I have a lot of love for Danny Jansen as well, but you're right. The guy has only played over 100 games once in his career, Carter. That is not good enough. That is just not good enough for a guy that you're going to have to pay a ton to and, and you don't want to have to have a backup catcher re- prepared to play 70 games a season. That's just not sustainable for a good baseball team. You need a good catcher, somebody that can control the infield, that can make those throws, that can make those plays. And Danny Jansen, you're right, looking at it long term, it, it's just not acceptable. And Alejandro Kirk really hasn't been. Yes, he's been hot and cold, very much so. But his defensive play, I think it, the, the improvements that we've seen over the past two, three seasons, has really been excellent. So as much as I hate Danny Jansen leaving, and he was a good part of this Toronto Blue Jays culture and team, um, I, I agree with you. I think it was a bullet dodged. Well, especially like with the way Alejandro Kirk was playing down the stretch. And you said with uh, him getting better defensively, making strides there, making strides with the bat as well. Just with Danny Jansen, uh, it's you were kind of just waiting for him to get injured, it felt like, oh, all the times with the Danny Jansen experience. So at least this way, you you put your full cards into Alejandro Kirk. You see what Alejandro Kirk is made of. You see what he can do for an MLB franchise over the, uh, over the period of a full season. So with Danny Jansen, again, you cut your losses. Uh, you're gonna, probably going to have to pay this guy between 13 to $18 million a year anyway for the 60-ish, the 80 games that he was going to provide you. Is that worth it in the long run? Uh, that's uh, for the fans, I guess, to decide. So leave it. Uh, your opinion in the comments. Uh, if you think we should have re-signed Danny Jansen, should we have moved on? Is Danny Jansen going to be better than Alejandro Kirk? But just kind of going into some Danny Jansen stats from this previous season. He played 62 games in Toronto in 2024. 42 hits, 6 home runs, 18 RBIs. A 212 average with a 671 OPS. 
uh, 0.6 war. When you look at the Red Sox, played 30 games, 15 hits, three home runs, six RBIs, a 188 average with a 623 OPS, 19.8 K rate, 15.6 uh, walk rate with the Red Sox, K rate with the Jays, 18.4. Again, smaller sample sizes, so I didn't really deep dive too much into that. Uh, Danny Jansen, like if he can stay healthy, there has been multiple years where he's projected to hit 30 home runs, but it's a big if when you talk about him staying healthy. So uh, just overall, just the Danny Jansen experience, I have nothing negative to say about him uh, other than the injuries. If he could stay, if, if this guy could stay healthy, I think he is, can be a top 10 catcher in all baseball. But when you look at uh, blocks, he had Alejandro Kirk beat on the blocks. But when you look at framing, he's not even in the same league as Alejandro Kirk. When you're looking at throwing out, throwing people out on the base paths, so Alejandro Kirk got a lot better as we got through the season. Overall, when you're looking at it, when really breaking it down, I have Alejandro Kirk over Danny Jansen. So that's why I think this was a good move by Ross Atkins and the Toronto Blue Jays organization. Yeah, I agree. And, and just to sort of cap things off, you're taking a look at uh, Danny Jansen's tenure with the Toronto Blue Jays, seven years. Uh, he's played in 501 games, uh, 1704 plate appearances. He had 329 hits, 72 doubles, uh, 74 home runs, 220 RBI with a batting average of 220, an on-base percentage of 308, a slugging of 419, and an OPS of 727, Carter. It's not bad stats. It's not pop-off-the-page numbers either, to say the very least. I, again, I appreciate everything Danny Jansen brought to this organization, to this team. But at the end of the day, I, I agree with you. I think Alejandro Kirk was the right decision here. Yeah, it's tough to talk about a player like that because, yeah, you would have a role here, but at the end of the day, I think it's just better for both players or both the player and the organization for both uh, both sides to just move on in this situation. But uh, I think that does do it for the majority of our trade deadline acquisitions. We just have the Ryan Yarborough one, which we'll throw in at some point next week. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the trade deadline. That was the 2024 Toronto Blue Jays. What they moved on from, we still have a lot to talk about with some of the prospects we got back again. Didn't even really talk about Cutter Coffee in this in this episode. What we really wanted to talk about was the Toronto Blue Jays that used to be on the team. And we'll leave 2024 in 2024. We still have some other guys we got to go over. Daniel Vogelback, uh, Eduardo Escobar might get a segment. He might get just, you know, a two-minute talking because he didn't really play with the Toronto Blue Jays. Tim Mazel will do a little bit of an episode on as well. There's still some more guys that we got to go into. But uh, from now... For the next week or so, it's probably just going to be uh, us focusing more so on the Toronto Blue Jays, or sorry, focusing more so on the World Series rather than the Toronto Blue Jays. And that pretty much will do it for our trade deadline uh, episodes. Other than Ryan Garborough, we'll throw him in somewhere. But that is that's been uh, the players that Toronto Blue Jays have traded away uh, during the 2024 Toronto Blue Jays deadline. Hopefully, now we can kind of just you know, obviously the World Series is going on, but after that. This uh, focus on the free agency, look forward to 2025, because I think a lot of us are sort of sick of living in 2024, especially regarding the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, man, it's uh, it, it, the time has come and gone for the 2024 season. Now it's just on to 2025. We ought, we have our season in review for all these players and, and talk about what they did and, and you know how they can move forward. We'll, we'll definitely have all those episodes coming out to you guys in the next little while before we really get into you know, what What free agent players are available? The, the 2025 look ahead. We have a ton of stuff coming out for you guys. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, pay attention, and we'll see you back on Monday.